When you first think of Australia, we can almost guarantee that snow, skiing and ski resorts is not the top 10 things that come to mind. However, Australia is actually home to rather incredible ski resorts, which come to life every winter season. Perisher is Australia's largest ski resort and the largest ski resort in the Southern Hemisphere. The resort is spread across seven different mountain peaks, which divide the resort up into four distinct main areas with 47 lifts to get around this whopping alpine resort. This is not a resort you can cover in one day and might even take a week or a season to explore every nook and cranny. However, it shouldn't deter you from visiting Perisher as it is really one of the best alpine experiences in Australia. We got out to explore Perisher in September 2022, which was quite late in the season, but the spring riding with blue skies made for an exceptional trip to the Australian snowy mountains. In this video, we'll go through a complete overview of Perisher Ski Resort and cover everything from the history, the resort zones, the lift, the terrain, lift ticket pricing, lodging options, apre scene, and its location. If you have visited Perisher Ski Resort, let us know your thoughts in the comments. And if you want to learn more, keep watching or check out Perisher along with plenty of other ski resorts on our website, snowstash.com. Exploring and holidaying in the Alpine region of Australia dates back to the 1930s, which is nearly on par with the likes of the USA and Canada. The four resort bases of Perisher all had their origins as separate ski resorts, which developed independently between 1939 and 1987. Smiggin Holes had its origins as a service point for the journey out to Charlotte's Pass, while the other development of Perisher and Guthica was spurred by the construction of the Snowy Mountain Scheme, and Blue Cow was the last resort development in the Snowy Mountains. In 1995, Perisher, Smiggin Hall, and the Alpine Australia Group, which owned Blue Cow and Guthica, merged to form Perisher Blue. Then in 2009, the resort simply became Perisher. Today, Perisher is home to the same four resort areas with 47 lifts that cover 3,076 acres of terrain. In 2015, Perisher was acquired by Vale Resorts and was the first ski resort purchased by the conglomerate outside of North America. This also meant Perisher was accessible on the Epic Pass and now allowed Aussie riders to purchase the Epic Pass and ride year round whilst accessing the resort offerings in North America and beyond. Perisher Valley is the main base region of Perisher and located front and centre of the resort. Many riders will start their day at Perisher Valley as this is where you'll find the main car park and the first stop at the underground train station. Perisher has the largest collection of hotels and accommodation options, food and beverage offering, as well as the Perisher Centre, which is where you can get lift tickets, rental gear, all under one roof. From the centre of Perisher Valley, you can take four different lifts to get up to the resort and begin your day of riding. Smiggin Holes is the epicentre of beginner terrain and learning at Perisher Ski Resort, and is a favourite zone for families as it's completely separate from the rest of the resort. Smiggin Holes has a collection of 10 different lifts, which range from magic carpets, T and J bars to a double lift which allows you to get really comfortable before taking on the largest ski resort in Australia. This private zone is perfect place for beginner progression and offers up beginner to intermediate trails only. No advanced or expert terrain is located in Smiggin Holes. Smiggin Holes also has its own collection of services and amenities such as lift tickets, gear rental, food and beverage, as well as a few accommodation options. Blue Cow is the most recent expansion of a major ski area in New South Wales and opened in 1987 along with the extension of the Swiss designed ski tube Alpine Railway which takes riders from Perisher Valley Station high up into the mountains and drops you off an underground railway station at 1905 metres. With the expansion of Blue Cow, all the terrain between the existing resorts was now covered and this was the missing piece for the merger of four resorts into one. Blue Cow is serviced by eight different lifts and offers up all types of ski trail options, from long, cruisy beginner trails through to expert shoots and challenging advanced tree runs. Blue Cow has its own collection of amenities with transport, food and beverages plus lift ticket and equipment available at the Blue Cow Terminal. Blue Cow is the only area of the resort which does not offer any accommodation as there is no option to stay overnight in the middle of a ski resort. Guthaga is the final resort area at Perisher Ski Resort and is located deep in the backside of the ski area. Guthaga offers up a truly unique experience thanks to its location as you're surrounded by towering snow-capped peaks and it really feels completely isolated from the rest of the resort. Home to the best intermediate trails found at Perisher and the benefit of staying out in Guthaga is that when the lifts start turning, it feels like a small private ski resort before anyone else from the main base areas can get out to the backside of the ski area. Perisher is not a large ski resort, it's truly massive and will take days, if not weeks, to cover every lift and every trail. The resort covers a whopping 3,076 acres of skiable terrain and this makes Perisher three times larger than any other resort in Australia. At over 3,000 acres of terrain, 
Perisher is larger than Breckenridge, Snowbird, and even Jackson Hole in the United States. However, the diversity of terrain certainly does not stack up against these three examples. Getting around all of this terrain is no small task, and therefore Perisher is home to 47 different lifts, which range from one eight-person lift, eight quad chairs, two of which are express, two triples, three doubles, 25 T-bars and rope toes, and five magic carpets. All of these lifts must take riders somewhere, and that is to Perish's 113 mark trails, which offer riders endless options from every single lift. Whilst there are 130 mark trails on the trail map, that does not include all of the little unique zones which can be found in and around every trail. In Australia, this is typically gladed tree skiing between the snow gums, which is a truly magical experience on a bluebird powder day. Parrish's lift system isn't the most modern in the country, nor is it the worst. It is efficient in getting everyone moving around the ski resort, but many of the supplementary lift options are T-bars. If you aren't comfortable riding a T-bar, you might find yourself waiting in a reasonably sized line at the chairlifts, especially on the weekends and during the holiday season. The main base area has the newest lift, which is an eight-person lift and services the front side beginner terrain, and this can become rather busy during peak periods. Walking over to the left of the main base, you can access the Perisher Quad Express Lift, which takes riders high up into the resort and offers a mid-station unload point. The only other express lift in the resort is the Pleasant Valley Quad, which is located deep in the heart of Blue Cow and services some great beginner terrain, but it is also a lift that is used to position yourself into other areas of the resort. The remainder of the lifts at Perisher is a collection of fixed grip quads, triples, and doubles that all service other zones supplemented by 25 T-bars, which help ease the congestion at many of the chairlifts due to the fact that T-bars offer a consistent movement of riders as well as being able to operate during adverse weather conditions. Every kind of rider will find themselves completely satisfied at Perisher Ski Resort, with the slight exception of expert riders. Perisher really is a paradise for intermediates, but overall, the resort is a great destination to progress your riding. Beginners will love smiggin' holes, thanks to the dedicated beginner zones. However, once progressing up to the main resort, there are 25 wide open beginner trails in the Blue Cow Zone would be our recommendation, as the front side of the resort can get really busy. Intermediate riders will be able to spend their whole season sliding at Perisher, as there are 67 ski trails that are graded blue for intermediate, and there are whole zones such as Mount Perisher that are serviced by five lifts and offer endless intermediate trails. Blue Cow and Guthiga should also be on the radar for any intermediate rider as the grooming in this zone is next to perfect and the fall line offers a consistent pitch to really test out those edges. Perisher isn't the kind of resort where you'll find insane steep runs or technical shoots, however that's not to say there isn't plenty of challenging terrain and sometimes you just have to earn those turns to take on the challenging trails. There are 20 trails that are graded advanced to expert and these can be found located across all four zones of the resort as well as two expert zones known as Double Trouble and the Devil's Playground which require technical traversing to access. These two zones are not open when we visited late in September but we've heard that the small hike in the traverse is well worth it. Our personal favourite at Perisher would be the plethora of intermediate runs found on Mount Perisher which has two lifts and three T-bars so the wait times are never that long. The trail with the best views at Perisher is the Pleasant View Run. Whilst the beginner run, the striking views of Mount Townsend as you meander down to the Guthiga base is hard to beat. The peaks rise 500 metres or 1,640 feet above the run so you really feel immersed in the snowy mountains while sliding past the Australian snow gums. Perisher is home to the greatest terrain park offering in Australia and comes to life very early on in the season and might be the greatest place to hang out in the spring. The whole front side of the ski resort is transformed into a world-class slope style course, which is often where you'll find Olympic level riders throwing down some of the best tricks you've ever seen. For those looking to take on their first terrain park feature or simply wanting to progress, you will find six other small terrain parks built throughout the other parts of the resort with features that range from small to medium to large. Riders who choose to visit Parrish's ski resort will find it to be one of the most expensive ski resorts in Australia. However, it is also the largest ski resort in the Southern Hemisphere. A single adult lift ticket will range anywhere from 180 Australian dollars to 200 Australian dollars, which is the equivalent of 125 US. A child lift ticket will range anywhere from 100 Australian to 110 Australian, which is about 75 USD as per the time of filming. These prices are in line with the cost of a lift ticket for a ski resort of equivalent size across USA and Canada. The real cost savings can be found by purchasing an Epic Australia Pass, for which Perisher is fully owned and operated by Vale Resorts. 
the Epic Australia Pass will cost anywhere between 899 to 1100 Australian dollars, depending on how far in advance you purchase. And the pass is paid off within five to six days. Epic Pass holders get unlimited access to Perisher and can get unlimited access to Falls Creek and Hotham in Australia as well. During the northern winter, the Epic Australia Pass can be used in Japan, Canada, Europe and across North America. Perisher is typically the first ski resort in Australia to open thanks to a serious investment in snowmaking capabilities as well as a high base elevation. The Aussie ski season will typically kick off on the Queen's birthday long weekend in June and go through to the first weekend of October. We have seen Perisher open early over the last few years, however it's normally only a single lift on a single wide trail which is perfect for the locals to get back on snow but not exactly worth making the trip for. The peak of the season is the July school holidays and you'll find the best winter conditions across August and early September and then perfect spring conditions for the last few weeks of September into early October. It feels as though there are on-mountain amenities peppered throughout the whole entire resort which certainly helps for a ski area of this size. At all of the main base areas you'll find restaurants, cafes, restrooms and places to warm up if the snow in the wind is howling. Out in the depths of the resort you'll find the Mid-Mountain Cafe at the mid-loading station of the Parish Quad Express, which is a great pit stop for lunch, however can become busy during peak times. At the base of the Pretty Valley Double Chair, there is a small hut cafe, which serves hot and cold food, along with a couple of beverage options and restrooms. The other major amenities are located in the Blue Cow Terminal, where you can access the train station, shops, restaurants, lockers, restroom, rentals, and general information. What makes Parish an incredible ski resort is the ability to stay in the heart of the snowy mountains with plenty of ski and ski out options. The range of accommodation at Parish is spread out across the three different base areas which all have their own unique flair and vibe. Parish Valley has the largest collection of hotels, lodges and self-contained apartments with all the amenities to suit every budget. Just down the road in Smigan Holes you'll find more family-centred accommodation which suits families or groups of beginner riders. Over on the back side of the mountains, in Guthaga, is where you'll find a small collection of ski lodges, alpine inns, private houses that can all be rented. Guthaga is home to some of the more advanced terrain in the resort, and when you're staying in this region, you really get a sense of being in the mountains. To access the accommodation, it's best you leave your vehicle down at the ski tube base and take the special built rail line up to the resort. Those not looking to stay directly in the snow or looking to save some cash will for- find more budget-friendly or even larger homes for multiple families down in the lakeside town of Jindabyne. Jindabyne has the largest collection of affordable accommodation and is located one hour's drive south of the ski resort. It also gives visitors in the region easier access to local bars, restaurants and supermarkets. The apres scene at Perisher is not what you'd find at other resorts as there's no real central village area. However, from what we've heard, it really goes off at the private parties across many of the lodges and apartments. The man from Snowy River Hotel has a large entertaining deck, which is the perfect place to get into the apres scene late in the afternoon. Or if you like, you can grab a drink at the Parisher Centre and then watch some of the experts throw down in the front side terrain parks. Parisher Ski Resort is in the New South Wales Snowy Mountain Range and the resort is located inside the picturesque Kosciuszko National Park. Sitting nearly halfway between Sydney and Melbourne, it is a five and a half hour drive from Sydney and a six and a half hour drive from Melbourne. Canberra is the closest major city with an international airport and it's two and a half hours drive from Perisher. For those staying at one of Perisher's four village areas, a car is not required once you arrive. Parking is available, but very limited across the village area, and the resort suggests it's best to park at the base and take the train. Driving within the Alpine region within Australia does require that you carry snow chains which fit your vehicle. When the snow starts to blow, the resort or the Kosciuszko National Park will advise when it's time to fit the chains to your vehicle, Perisher Ski Resort is an incredible destination with many factors that make it a must-visit ski area, not just in Australia, but also in the Southern Hemisphere. What do you think about Perisher? Have you been, or is it on your ski bucket list? Let us know in the comments.